Did you evolve a system for naming these races and therefore their histories and alphabets, literature and so on? I didn't evolve it. I merely used what I knew. But uh, yeah. that is a rather difficult question, really. But uh, every human being, at least every human being who has gifted at all in that way, has a, what you might call his own native language. That's quite distinct from the, the first learnt. What we call a native language is your first learnt. But every human being has an, an individual linguistic character. As he has an individual face, colouring and body. And I think, therefore, you find that people have what I should call linguistic predilections. But, of course, like one's physical characteristics, that shifts a bit as you, uh, as you grow and also as you have a, uh, more experience. Well, the language I've entered tried to fit my actual personal linguistic predilection or pleasure. Well, now, obviously, from history, those two languages have got to be uh, related. They're, they're quite different. All you do is you, you have to posit a purely invented original form or original sound scheme. And then you have to make uh, language A develop certain sound laws and come to B, and uh, uh, certain other ones produce B. They will then be related, however little related they seem, but you will have that sort of feeling. So therefore, if you have, for the purposes of the plot, or purposes yes. of some part of the book, yes. to invent a new name for a new character, if uh, you consciously say to yourself, um, in Quenya, his name will be so-and-so, but in Sindarin, his name will be this. Yes, you do have that. In the first test, it has to sound a nice name to me, even if I don't know what it means. But then you, of course, come across this unfortunate fact that if it very it doesn't always happen that if you uh, then uh, work that those same elements with the same meaning into the into a name, it doesn't always come out as a nice name. In spite of that, so then you have to have to have to give them another name or do something about it. Yes, it's a it's a minor technical craft actually. Well, it's an interesting technical Princess. craft because you you do it with equal success when you name unpleasant characters like orcs because. <laughs> <laughs> All your unpleasant characters yeah. are instantly identifiable as unpleasant characters the minute one reads their names. Yes, I suppose they would. You wouldn't like to think much of a chap called Uglu, could you, no? Yet dwarves, although they have names composed of similarly uncomfortable consonants to, to, to the English ear, don't the names are, are not unattractive. No. Immediately they're attractive. Yes. And this seems to me one of the great strengths of the book, amid this enormous conglomeration of names. One doesn't get lost. No, At least after it. the first reading, after the second reading of the book. Well, it does need an index. I'm very glad you told me that, because I gave a great deal of trouble. Well, you were must, you see. My thing is, I did try to use the languages which I did understand, uh, which is, after all, the primary and most important of all cultural penitentiaries. I tried to use them for that purpose, to characterize. Also, of course, gives me great pleasure. A good name. I always, in the writing, always start with a name. Give me a name and it produces a story, not the other way about, normally. Of the languages you know, which were the greatest help to you in writing The Lord of the Rings? Oh, no. Yes. Well, because I started trying to invent languages almost at once, because the uh, uh, same way that I, my reading is, uh, of myth has been disturbed, because I've never hardly got through any fairy story without wanting to, um, to write by myself. It, it's perhaps an, an added discipline to trace back anyway to sources in a work of this sort. But do you trace in the languages you invented more to Scandinavia or more um, or later things like Middle English or? I don't know. No, I think, well, of these sort of modern languages, uh, I should have said that uh, Welsh was always attracted to me by its style and sound more than any other. Even though I first only saw it on coal trucks, I always wanted to know what it was about. It seems to me, certainly, that, that um, the music of Welsh comes through in the names you've chosen for mountains and for mm. places in general. Yeah. Do you acknowledge this? Yes, yeah. very much. But a, a much rarer, but very potent uh, influence on myself has been Finnish. <laughs>